What is up everyone? Welcome back to Vanpocalypse and today we're going to be changing out the thermostat on a Ford 1988 E150 Econoline van. This is a follow-up to two other videos in the series. In the first video I was able to extract the OBD1 trouble code. If you need to figure out your code, you have a check engine light, check out that video. The second video I changed out the ECT engine coolant temperature sensor and in today's video, I'm also going to change out the thermostat because with this code, something is probably wrong with the sensor, but sometimes it also is a thermostat. And since I'm all up in there and this is an old van, I'm just going to change out both parts. Part you're going to need is obviously the thermostat and also you have the option of replacing the housing. Sometimes it's sold together and it's just more easy that way, but you don't have to replace the housing, although you should probably get a new gasket. So definitely need at least the thermostat and the gasket. And that's what I bought for this job. Uh, you might need some sealant for the uh, for the new um, thermostat. And also you're going to need a combination wrench. For me, it's a one half inch. Um, but depending on how tough it is to get to it, you might need some shorter wrenches, the stubby, stubby combination wrench, and you might even need an offset wrench. These, these come in handy. I need all these. I use these all the time. These uh, offset wrenches. So you might need that. You'll just need your regular sockets as well. Wrench and sockets and all that. Um, different sizes. Probably an extension. All your regular tools. You know, extension and also a screwdriver. Probably flathead screwdriver for the most part to loosen up for all the hoses. Those are the, the, the basic tools you'll probably need. To get started, you might run into a situation where you need something else, but that's what I'm starting with. First thing, make sure to remove, obviously, the air filter housing and all these hoses that are going to be in the way. Also, remove the radiator cap. And now we're going to follow. There's the distributor with the red cap. Follow this hose right here from the radiator all the way here. That right there is your thermostat housing. Now I'm going to go ahead and loosen the clamp that is on the hose connected to the thermostat housing using a flathead screwdriver. You could also use the proper socket or whatever you need to use to loosen up the clamp here. And then going to remove it, but have a towel on hand. Be careful. Coolant is going to come out all over the place. This somewhere where it won't leak. I try to put this here so I won't leak. I'm gonna put a rag just in case it, just in case it, uh, see two bolts one here, one down there. Can't be more simple. Is this right here? This must be this is the uh, the sensor. So we have the sensor here. I'm gonna replace that. I'm gonna replace the um, uh, thermostat in here. Sensor thermostat. Next, you want to remove this smaller hose right here. Disconnect just from the thermostat housing. You don't have to disconnect the other side. It might be easier if you want to disconnect the whole thing, but at least disconnect this smaller hose right here. Uh, loosen up the clamp and then remove that hose from the thermostat housing. The bolts on my vehicle I'll use a half inch wrench. Um, and I noticed the top left one very easy to get to, but the bottom left one not as easy. But for the top left, just a standard wrench uh you know combination wrench half inch and uh, i was able to get it out pretty easily all right got the first bolt out do it yourself car video won't be complete without a dog running around to make it easier to get that bottom right bolt, you might have to remove the connection to the ignition control module, which is this gray thing here on the distributor. And you might even need to loosen the distributor bolt. Don't remove it, just loosen it and then move the distributor to the right. Um, rotate it to the right if you need to, only if you need to. To get to the bottom right bolt for the thermostat, you might need a one of these offset wrenches. You might, it depends on the model, but for me I do because everything's in the way. This water pump's in the way. Uh, I had to move the distributor over. So if this though fits in, I can get to it. So once you get those two bolts out, and you might have to use a stubby wrench as well, 
little stubby wrench, maybe the offset wrench, the regular wrench, whatever, you know, different wrenches you use to get to that bottom right bolt was a pain in the ass for me, but I did get it out. Then you're gonna pull out that housing. It's gonna have a gasket and it's gonna have the thermostat. And the thermostat looks like this. The old one's on the left, new one is on the right. And unfortunately, I somehow didn't get it on uh, tape when I was taking it out, but that's basically it. I mean, once you get those two bolts out, it should all come right out. So we have the old housing here and it's gonna go in like this. The longer side sticks out like that. Shorter side goes in. Um, and we want the flux capacitor sticking up. So when this goes in, it's gonna go in uh, something like this. I'm slightly at an angle. Anyway, this uh, hole facing up. And the longer with the spring and stuff going out away from the engine. Now we're going to put the new thermostat in the housing, whether it's the new or the old housing. You want to make it so the spring is sticking out of the housing. The spring is going to enter into the van when you put it in. And also, yeah, a little bit of sealant, a little silicone sealant to keep that thermostat in its proper sitting. Where it sits right there, there's a little circle where it goes in. You need to keep it centered because if it falls off center, it's going to leak everywhere. Put a little bit of sealant there, just a little tiny bit to keep it in place. Also put some sealant on the gasket, both sides of the gasket. Again, the gasket goes on top after you've put in the thermostat. So it's pretty self-explanatory after this. Just put it in the exact way that you took it out. Try to hold it in place for a little bit. Let that silicone uh, sealant kind of grab its way so that you kind of, it stays there. It's not going to stay there permanently, but it stays there long enough that you can get the bolts in. And then you just put first start with that top left, the easier bolt, and then the bottom right one. And again, you might have to use uh, offset, a little stubby wrench, whatever wrench you got to use to get that one tightened up. And also make sure when you're done, put the uh, to move the distributor back if you had to move it where it was and tighten that bolt. And then plug back in the ignition control module. The bottom right, I'm having to use a little stubby, a little shorter wrench here. I'd suggest if you have a, you know, be able to get in there and get it. So just a kind of combination of regular wrenches, a little short stubby wrench, and the offset wrenches. I needed them all just to get to this, but I'm able to get it. Put the hose back on, tighten the clamp. Put this hose back on, tighten the clamp. Everything's hooked up now. I'm gonna put the big ass hose back on and tighten the clamp. There you go. Use an extension, nice and tight. Now you just put everything back together the way it was before and make sure that before you start driving around anywhere far to check, make sure you start the car and see if everything is okay, see if there's any leak or anything like that. Also, of course, we've got to put in uh, more coolant because I lost a lot of coolant. We'll fill up the coolant. Drop something else, and I don't even know what I just dropped or where I ended up. I'm pissed. Okay, so I got it all put back together, nice and sturdy. Try to replace the ECT sensor, replace the thermostat, and the baby uh, sounds much smoother. Running good, no check engine light. Took a little bit of time, struggles. That's the uh, price we pay as do-it-yourselfers. But this baby uh, hopefully is good to go. I'm going to take it on a trip and we'll see if the check engine light pops back on. And if it does, then I screwed up.